I am Asif Amin and I feel very privileged to welcome you all on the behalf of the organizing committee and the Department of Biotechnology, University of Kashmir to this national conference on reproductive health and disease. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have the gracious presence of two veteran and world-renowned scientists who have been conferred with many international and national accolades, notably the Padma Shri Award by the Government of India for their unparalleled contribution to Indian science. These personalities are Padma Shri Professor Amal Madan and Padma Shri Professor R.N.K. Bamzai. Thank you, gentlemen, for accepting our invitation and gracing the occasion. Well, Marcus Cicero, a Roman statesman, scholar, and a philosopher said, in nothing do men more nearly approach the gods than in giving health to fellow men. It's on occasions like this we get opportunities to learn, understand, and exchange the ideas and discuss the advancements in respective scientific fields, which broadens our understanding of science and expands our horizons of knowledge. We look forward to get an exposure about what the best of the brains think about this very dynamic issue of reproductive health and disease. Today, uh, we are going to discuss the reproductive diseases of the human being. In this UT of Jumar Kashmir, the concept was conceived in 2018 when there was a call from ICMR, Government of India, that we have issues regarding the reproductive diseases, especially in, in the UT of Jumar Kashmir. And to our surprise, there was a 32% infertility in the Jumun Kashmir. And under the chairmanship of Padma Shri, Professor R.K. Bamzai, sir, we debated on this and we discussed the issue and ultimately made a consortium. And in turn, we got a grant from the ICMR. We are thankful to ICMR for you know, uh, giving us a chance to work on the reproductive biology and reproductive disease in the Jumun Kashmir. Not taking much time, I would introduce my department, which has been established in the year 2000 under the leadership of Professor Andrabi. And we have established in labs. We are working on the signal transduction. We are working on the neuros neurosciences. And we have been working on the cell molecular biology and molecular genetics. So we have been getting extramural projects from the funding agencies, like Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, ICMR, and other agencies. Since morning, I have been trying to jot down some things where I can poke my nose in the theme of this conference. I just pointed out a few things. What can be the role of nutrition in this phase? That means periconception or preconception. And nutrition has an important role in all these things. One is normal nutrients, and then there are other things, abnormal components of your food, which play a very vital role in safety of these gametes. Once we talk of reproductive health, the first thing that is safety of these gametes, they should reach the destiny in proper condition. So environment or other factors, particularly the nutrients, they play a vital role in all these things. We have been witnessing, we have been seeing that different types of toxicants in the process of production of our crops, of our different commodities, be it meat, be it milk, be it meat, say, which we see in normal course of the production, many toxicants, they find way into our foods, be it milk, meat, fruits, vegetables, cereals, etc. Those toxicants, mainly in the form of heavy metals, which come from pesticide residues, other agrochemicals, or even a different type of uh, category of toxicants which is being extensively st studied in last uh, couple of decades, that is process-induced toxicants. Biochemists who are sitting here, they can understand it better than me. Process-induced toxicants, mainly acrylamides are there, which 
get created when foods are processed at very high temperatures. Those acrylamides are produced in the foods and have a negative influence on these gametes. Similarly, different types of those uh, toxicants, uh, uh, perfurals are there, which are produced during processing of foods. Even during simple processing uh, techniques like fermentations, biogenic amines are produced, which have an effect on overall human health and probably on the reproductive health as well. So I think it needs to be viewed beyond this maternal and child health. Before conception, we have to start it before conception. And even if we start interventions during pregnancy, many interventions will undoubtedly correct the maternal deficiencies, but it will have, in some cases, it will have the negative impact on pregnancy outcome. In many cases, it won't affect it. So these things negatively, even in some cases, it will affect negatively the pregnancy outcome. No doubt the maternal health will improve, the indicators will improve, but it will have a negative impact on the pregnancy outcome. So these things, I think we have to see beyond uh, this maternal and child health. Felicitating someone like me elates the person who felicitates more than the person who is felicitated. I am really flattered. I did not expect this kind of respect. I must tell you that I'm, I am overwhelmed and somehow I have gotten <laughs> the best of the things that I have ever desire, uh, desired, honestly. I was not as happy when I became Vice Chancellor, but appreciating something which I have really held very dear to my heart is an occasion when it is more than an Oscar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Kadri. I personally am indebted to Professor Kadri for this. It's amazing that how this camaraderie has worked between these principal investigators and co-principal investigators in this Indian Council of Medical Research supported, whose nominees are here, a mega project uh, which has been going on now for quite a few years. And this camaraderie where they pooled their expertise, they pooled their resources to do good science and uh, specifically in the area of reproductive health and disease in Jammu and Kashmir. Now they are worth appreciation and I congratulate uh, all of them uh, who are partnering, partnering in this exercise. Now the responsibility of any society world over towards their future generation should be towards maintaining and uh, ensuring reproductive health. And there's a reason for that. And I would come to that in a minute. And it does not mean, reproductive health does not necessarily mean to procreate. So it's not procreation alone, but to ensure physical, emotional, behavioral, social well-being and that's a com that's a comprehensive well-being which uh, world health organization has mentioned about or outlined uh, we have to realize that uh, building a nation and its future requires a reproductively healthy society nobody would doubt that and india realized this long ago you know decades back because they started programs in reproductive health and child care. This was done in different phases in the country. And uh, the spread was vast. They had, uh, this was done with a, with a social goal. And they executed certain programs to begin with where they had to control uh, the maternal and child health program obviously had to control the uh, maternal, uh, sorry, mortalities and morbidities uh, in uh, child, in, in neonatal stages, because that was happening in the country at a huge scale. And over the years, the maternal as well as neonatal child mortality has reduced, but not to the extent as it has happened in the rest of the world. So we still have to achieve uh, a lot more in that direction. Obviously, these reproductive and child health programs introduced other program, programs as well. 
like immunization, you are familiar with obstetric care and other related programs at primary health center level, at community health center level. Much remains to be desired in this direction. Uh, but I think things are improving and the way probably in future, that's my hope, that the way health and wellness centers are not being, I mean, primary health centers and community health centers are requisitioned as uh, health and wellness centers. And I hope that this achievement which we are looking forward to is, is really achieved in due course of time. Because after all, what do we want in the society? We want that there should be efficient service, health service or health care, it should be cost effective. It should be available to the most rural area in the country and in GNK. But is that happening? Well, to some extent, yes. And uh, we need to do more. And there has to be movement on a twin track. The twin track is, on one hand, we have to do basic infrastructure, primary health center infrastructure, which has, has to be in place. But at the same time, there has been a lot of developments, modern developments, modern technology tools which have come into picture. So we have to introduce simultaneously. So there's a lot more responsibility on healthcare systems, including in reproductive health and diseases, that we have to see to it that there is not only the primary infrastructure in place, wherever it's not available, but also the modern technology, diagnostics, the omics technology of genomics, proteomics, transcriptomics, for diagnostic purposes and defining for uh, intervention purposes is also taken care of. Biotechnology, to which we are today meeting in here, may be a new word, maybe a word about uh, two and a half decades back or three decades back which came into prevalence very greatly. But biotechnology is something with which man has started life. One of the first inventions which the man did was to store milk. And he used to live in a cave. When the functions of the wheel had not come in, and the concepts of fire had just been born, at the time, he found a very easy method of preserving milk. And this preservation of the milk, which our food scientists very well know, is a system by which it gets cultured. And we have got a life, bios, which is keeping the milk without being spoiled. And therefore, I get over to the word bios, what we call the biological life. I shall be speaking uh, a little later today. Therefore, I won't like to go over into the technical aspects of my presentation. But there are a few things which uh, I thought that as a part of the inauguration, I must be sharing with you. Why we talk today more of application of science than science as such. I think you all must be understanding this, that the definition of science, it is used to be, when I was a graduate student or when I was a young student, has had a 360 degree turn. Today, science does not mean that you are taking up a book or you are trying to prove and disprove a physical principle. Science does not simply mean today that you want to prove a particular thing, a particular enunciation over and over again and get to the same result and declare it, yes, it is scientifically correct. Today, the science means that how you apply proposition to deliver. And that's what's most important for students today, students like you, 
and my young faculty, even my senior faculty. We are missing the place that today science means that we can, what you can deliver to the society. And that's what the responsibility of young means, young people means. And that's what the responsibility of today, the seminar, is that when we are talking of reproduction in health and disease. In fact, what matters today in the process of education is not that what you are getting in the classroom as a dictation from your teacher or what you are able to imbibe from the volumes of materials which are available or how best you are able to press your finger onto a computer and to get reels and sheets of information. No. That's already there. You don't have to do much on that. I know that in my time it used to be a great job to even get a little information. And we used to write that information on cards and keep to those cards very dear and near to ourselves. As dear as my wife used to say that these pieces of paper are more valuable for us to, to the family than probably we all others because you always keep yourself surrounded by those pieces of paper. But those pieces of paper were evaporated. They are gone. Why they are gone? Because there is a small machine which has taken over those papers. So therefore, what used to be in those papers, we got the information. That information today is already there. But what is not there is the skills which go along with that information. So in a university, when I speak, I make it a point to convey to the young graduates, to the students, to the affiliates with science and to those who are getting conferences that kindly emphasize today on skill development and skill delivery. Through this conference, we can really uh, go through the changes and have some policy implication. Uh, I myself, as a researcher, uh, I guided one of the students on uh, awareness of reproductive health of adolescent girls in uh, Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh. And uh, believe me, we had a very, uh, you know, surprising results which came up in this particular, uh, you know, research. Uh, the student was from Jammu. She is now uh, principal of one of the uh, government degree colleges. And uh, we also implemented uh, a short-term uh, health, uh, health and hygiene program on a selected group of girls who were uh, really not aware of any type of uh, health and hygiene measures to be uh, taken care, say, uh, during uh, a menstrual uh, period. So uh, we, after that, we assess them again and, uh, you know, uh, how awareness and sensitization uh, can affect a group we saw in this. So uh, it's very important that you have got this group to the, uh, you know, audience today uh, because uh, this is the group which will uh, make change. As I was going through the schedule of your programs, I can see uh, we have uh, maximum speakers are from health side. I can also see some of them are here. Uh, I'm sure it will be a very fruitful uh, conference, Department of Biotechnology, as our Dean Academic Affairs said, and other speakers also said, they are doing very well. They have uh, many projects in hand, uh, very much involved in research, have good publications. Uh, the university looks forward uh, to this department, that it will be involved more uh, in international projects, at national projects, because uh, it's a very important department of the uh, university. And uh, I make few visits uh, to the department. I could feel the ambience of that research culture. 
and uh, you know uh, commitment towards uh, research which is a very good uh, indication i would definitely like the department that uh, we have some type of collaborative uh, conferences you have maybe uh, with uh, food technology food science and nutrition people uh, with department of social work with department of socio uh, sociology because um, definitely i think uh, you know some of the uh, contribution from these fields would have uh, as i gave an example we conducted one of the study on this it would have added to the contribution of this uh, you know conference although i can see it's more towards uh, research and it's more towards intervention but i as in uh, you know uh, home science uh, extension a student i feel uh, while reaching to the community is a great need when we talk of these two themes reproductive health and infertility